So hello everybody, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Now, this video is the first in a, an entire series and it's a slight departure from the things that I've done over the last couple of weeks. I would like to talk about game audio. And the main reason I wanna do that is because I'm actually teaching a class on game audio over the summer. And I felt uh, this might it might make sense to take some of the content that we're covering in that class and turned it into a YouTube series, which uh, in return, I'm actually going to use uh, in lieu of a textbook in my class. So, so the things that we are going to talk about in this series are exactly the same things I'm also going to basing my class on. Uh, and so you have the advantage of actually kind of going through a, a textbook with me. How cool is that? Now, uh, game audio, uh, just to give you a little bit of background of what this class is about or what the sequence is about. The sequence covers really the workflow uh, through which audio and music is integrated into game development. So this is not a class on audio or music production. This is not a sequence, a video sequence on game design. It is really kind of sits in the middle between the two. So it, it, it's really kind of focusing on the integration really. Uh, the class once again serves as a textbook in my uh, or the, the video series this serves as a textbook in my class and as a result of that I need to change the posting schedule slightly I usually post uh, during Wednesday afternoons uh, and because my class is on Monday I need to move that to Monday so so expect this video is going up on Monday um, around noon uh, Eastern time in the United States uh, with the exception of the uh, Independence Day holiday obviously um, now the uh, class on, and the sequence are both designed to be fairly uh, game engine as well as digital audio workstation agnostic. So if you have never worked with a game engine before, you can follow this class. And at the same time, if you never worked with a digital audio workstation before, you will also be able to get advantage uh, by following the, the videos in this, in this sequence. Um, we will, however, briefly look at some functionality that Steinberg Noendo, that particular DAW, brings into, into game development through the Game Audio Connect feature that they have. That is a fairly advanced feature. I'm not yet completely sure how I'm going to cover that because it re requires a lot of preparation for something that essentially is just pushing a button at the end. Uh, but I at least plan to touch it at, at one of the, of the future videos. Now, the first part, and actually for, for a long time, I thought about calling this the zeroth part because it's, it's, it's really kind of uh, just preparing everything for, for the next couple of weeks. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a couple of um, thoughts about the background on the workflow that we are using. Uh, it's based on a particular game engine and a particular audio middleware that, 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 we, that we are going to use. Uh, and uh, and then we're going to go through the installation of the, all the necessary software and examples and everything, which which actually takes a little bit of time. So that's a fairly involved process. Uh, it's not not particularly complicated. It's just lengthy. Um, uh, and the important thing here is that everything that we're going to use is completely free. This is actually one of the nice things that happened in the game design industry over the last 10 years or so, that uh, because of the increased competition between three different software packages, the, the developers decided to give away their development environments completely for free. This is true for almost all of the game engines that are on the market today. There are a few exceptions, obviously, but the things that we are going to use are entirely free to use. There are certain limitations. Um, but the limitations are nothing that, that is going to be particularly occurrence concerning to us. They're really kind of limitations in terms of uh, the type of projects that you can do. Obviously, you cannot do multi-million dollar uh, developments without paying a license fee. Uh, but if you are just a personal user or doing something uh, for a non-profit, that, that is perfectly fine to use it that way. Um, now let's first talk a little bit about game engine. So what actually is a game engine? Now in short, a game engine is a development environment in which uh, video games are produced. So, so it, it's, it's, it's really bringing everything together and it's trying to make that, that process, which 
is a little bit of a complex process as easy as possible so that develops can work as efficiently as possible. Uh, I'm not going to speak too much about that process now. We're going to look at that later when we are going to start um, starting up uh, our, our game engine for the first time uh, so that we can actually see how that works. But in principle, what it really is, uh, it is a visual environment for an event-based programming language. Now, this is a handful. Um, once again, don't worry too much about it at that point. Uh, it is sort of a tool that, that the game developers use in order to develop video games. Um, there are a couple of popular options and you might have heard of those. Uh, and if you're one of my students, you obviously have a couple of years experience in using those. Uh, and the most popular ones are Unity uh, and, uh, and Unreal Engine. So uh, well, here, here is Unity and, and here is Unreal Engine. I'm going to post the, the links um, down below so that you can check these things out. Once again, all of these the, uh, game engines are completely free to use, so you can download them and experiment with them and, and kind of see if you like uh, it or not. But there are, there are other options as well, but these are the most popular ones. Um, and the, those are the ones that are really kind of used most often in, in game developments these days. Uh, there are slightly different use cases for those game engines. So, so while their functionality essentially covers everything, so you can do pretty much any game with any of the two game engines, they, they do lend themselves more or less towards one particular use case. Uh, and the one use case that is uh, particularly um, ap applicable to Unreal is uh, our games that are ultra realistic or mixed reality environments. Uh, Unreal is the game engine that is used on the Weather Channel to create this, this uh, mixed reality effects. Whereas Unity is, is really good in, uh, in mobile game development. It is a platform that is particularly um, applicable to, 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 to these types of games. However, once again, uh, both game engines uh, are capable to do the entire spectrum from mobile games to ultra realistic. So it becomes a little bit a, um, a, a for, for companies is it becomes a little bit more of a, of a business decision which licensing model you want to go with and 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 if you are in in large scale or highly ultra realistic uh, environments triple uh, a titles that try to be as, as realistic as possible you might uh, go the unreal route and if you are in a mobile development environment where you want to do iphone games and android games you're probably going to choose android and and uh, sorry you're probably going to choose unity and and maybe maybe even some some other more applicable platform to do that so uh, so so they're, do, they're both doing both but they have slightly different use cases now one important aspect is that game engines traditionally have focused or the development of game engines really has focused on making the visual impression as realistic as possible and and really kind of getting the graphics to a point that uh, that we have today so so um, for the last 20 years or so developers have spent a lot of time in optimizing all their algorithms in order to make the the graphical representation of these games as accurate as possible as fast as possible to get the frame rates as high as possible to get the the uh the, the realism as high as possible up to the point that we now have real-time ray tracing um but audio and that's what we are talking about in this sequence here audio was always an afterthought and uh, and it might sound uh, slightly weird that people didn't kind of go for both, but the reason for that is primarily because um, graphics processing and audio processing have completely different computing requirements. Um, now, the easiest way to see that is if you think about uh, if you have, for example, a, a, a system that is sort of slow in, in processing the graphics, what you're going, what you're going to get are frame drops. Uh, and these frame drops, where you, where you suddenly have a little bit of a stutter in the game, uh, are annoying, but, but they are really only that. They are annoying. They don't really disrupt the game uh, significantly. However, if you have dropouts in the audio, uh, then uh, then you get cracks, you get pop, uh, pops, you get crackles, you get all kinds of artifacts that, that can really mess up your experience. And, and so the real-time uh, real computing for audio is significantly um, more important than it is in, uh, in, in graphics rendering. And the second thing is that uh, when you're rendering graphics, uh, the processes that you're using or the algorithms that you're using are highly parallelizable. 
Um, is that the word? Yeah, uh, parallelizable. So, so essentially meaning that you can split up and use multiple cores. That's why GPUs have thousands of, of computing cores to uh, essentially run the same process for each pixel individually or for a, for a couple of pixels individually. And, and, and that, is, that is something that allows a completely different type of optimization as opposed to audio where parallelization is a much more of an issue. I mean, there, there, is, there are certain things that you can parallelize parallelize. Uh, if you have multiple tracks, for example, you can you can render each track individually. But in the end, uh, it is a more of a sequential processing. So so um, so on one hand, we have the real time requirements that are much, much higher uh, for audio than they are for, for video. And uh, and, you know, our modern computers are not real time computers. We, we always need to remind ourselves of that. So, so they're not really meant to process uh, things in real time. Uh, and uh, and on the other hand is sort of the parallelization. So when when game developers started to really kind of push the limits of graphics, uh, it was just development in one certain direction. It was not necessarily development in the other direction. So audio became sort of an afterthought. Um, now this allowed companies to move into that space and provide solutions that sit on top of the game engine and add that functionality that is required in order to create real-time audio at a very high quality level uh, to a game engine which is designed to create graphics at a very high quality level. And these types of software softwares uh, uh, are called audio middlewares. Uh, so an audio middleware is really kind of a, uh, a software that sits on top of the game engine and adds that audio functionality that the game engine generally is lacking. And by lacking, I mean the game engines do uh, have functionality that allow them to render audio and they actually have become much, much better over the last couple of years, but uh, they, they are not really designed for it and there are still a lot of, of ways to go in order to reach the level of quality uh, on the audio level that, uh, that they have on the on the on the video on the graphics level and audio middleware takes care of that now there are a couple of popular middleware solutions that uh, that have essentially been developed over the last 20 years or so and the two are ones that are most widely used and are, quite frankly i'm not even sure if there's a third one these are the two essentially that everybody uses uh, audio kinetic wise um, which uh, which which is here and uh, and F mod uh, this, this one and uh, in contrast to the game engines these middleware solutions are actually um, somewhat different in their so 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 they have dif they have different ways and different approaches they are not as uniform as the two uh, game engines that we're talking about so the two the two game engines actually look and, and, and feel pretty much similar, but the two uh, uh, middleware solutions, the two audio solutions are to some extent completely different. Uh, they are different in the licensing model. This is one of the reasons why FMOD generally is, the, is, is something that our students like to use more because it has a much more flexible licensing model that is a little bit more open to independent game developers, whereas VICE is really meant for triple A titles that uh, that can work with very complex licensing agreements. It's a per, per project licensing agreement. It's also a little bit more restrictive in terms of the free version that that uh, that you can use. So you cannot do everything with the free version. Um, um, you can do enough uh, for, uh, for, 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 for the things that we're going to talk about in this, in this sequence, but, but you cannot do everything with the free version. And, uh, and more importantly, they differ substantially in the workflow. So while, while um, the um, uh, FMOD uh, solution looks um, a lot like a digital audio workstation, it actually, if, if you look at it, it looks a lot like Ableton. Um, so it has the same type of workflow as Ableton. The uh, the Vice solution is uh, is much much closer to a traditional uh, software tool that you would use in a game development environment. So it looks a lot like a game engine or even a modeling tool uh, or a, an animation tool. So so it's 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 a little closer to what developers in game in game environments or in game design actually use, whereas. Uh, FMOD is a little closer to the software that music producers would use. Now, uh, in this particular series, we're going to focus on one on one workflow, and this one workflow is uh, is essentially the combination between Unity and Unreal. Uh, sorry, between Unity and uh, 
and uh, and uh, and Vice. Now, technically, you could combine all of those, so you can combine any of the game engines with any of the uh, of the uh, middleware solutions. But we are going to focus on this one between Unity and Vice. And the reason we're going to do that is has a, there are actually a number of reasons why why I chose that that combination. First of all, it has a very very easy to follow workflow. It is tightly integrated. Uh, that essentially means that the, you don't need to know a lot about the game engine in order to be able to understand on how the integration works. Um, if you use WISE with, with Unreal, the functionality is essentially the same, but you can't really get anywhere unless you have a, a, a basic understanding of how Unreal works in principle. So, so we would have to actually go through the basic functionality of Unreal before we can actually kind of look into the uh, integration of WISE into Unreal. So that's that's one advantage. Um, the second advantage is that WISE is because it's really meant or really developed or targeted towards AAA games. It is the more complete package. It has a lot of functionality that we are going to use in this series that FMOD does not have. And uh, and and therefore I felt it's, it's more appropriate to use that one. However, um, um, I am thinking about maybe adding one or two uh, videos towards the end of the series where we also talk about FMOD primarily because it's such a popular uh, system to use. And there are a couple of things that you can do in FMOD that you actually can't do in, uh, in, in WISE. But for that, you need a little bit more understanding about programming. So it's a little bit more basic game design and development. So it's a little bit more complex, but nevertheless, uh, I, I might actually add a couple of videos regarding FMA towards the end. And the final thing is really that the, uh, that the combination between Unity and WISE has a very beginner friendly workflow. So, so it's, it's, it is really something that I can talk about and that we can kind of experiment with without knowing too much about Unity and without knowing anything about WISE. Um, it is really a very straightforward workflow. Now, the user interface is not going to look particularly user-friendly. So just so that you're aware of that. When it, the, first, the first time we're going to open that, it's going to look very daunting. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, the workflow itself is actually very straightforward. Uh, but once again, the skills that we are going to talk about are going to be easily transferable from Unity to Unreal if you know how to work with Unreal. And I might add some videos on FMOD uh, later in this, in, this, uh, in this series or after my class actually has ended. Now, a couple of uh, warnings for Mac users. Uh, Audio Kinetic Vice is a software that has been primarily developed in Windows. Well, actually, it has been developed in Windows. It is a Windows software. Uh, it does run on Macs, however, the Mac port is based on Wine, a virtualization uh, of a Windows system. So technically, the Mac port is the Windows version running in a uh, virtualized system that uh, in, a, in a Windows system within in a, within a Mac. Now, this is a couple of consequences, and the first consequence is that is that the user interface on a Mac is slightly sluggish. So 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 don't be disappointed if we if you're sitting on a Mac and you're using Wine that the user interface is not as snappy as, as you are used to. Uh, the functionality is fine, everything works fine, but just the rendering of the user interface can be a little bit laggy. Um, so it's not it's not kind of kind of coming up instantly. Windows sometimes take a, a, a couple of, of microseconds to 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 kind of show up, but uh, but but that's something to be concerned or that's something that you need to know. So 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 be prepared for that. Um, and uh, and the second thing and the more important thing is that because uh, it is relying on Wine as a virtualization system to virtualize a Windows platform within a Mac. Uh, whenever Mac, uh, whenever Apple changes the operating system or the system architecture, it takes a little longer for Audio Kinetic to port or to, to make uh, Vice available for these new Mac systems. Uh, so, so when you're when you're working on a Mac, uh, be aware that you and you you want to use Vice. Be aware that you need to wait a little longer with upgrading to the latest operating system, and also be aware that there might be times where you really can't or uh, you have trouble using it. In in the last time I taught this class, I had a student who bought a brand new Mac, uh, who was uh, which was on on, on uh, came with pre-installed Catalina, and at that time Vice did not yet work on Catalina. So there's 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 really nothing you can do at that point. You need to wait until Vice has um, finished the port uh, on Vine based on Vine, uh, so that it works with Catalina. Now currently, um, Vice does not yet or the 
let's put it that way, device development platform does not yet support Apple Silicon. So, so if you have an M1 Mac, um, at least according to the device, uh, to the Audio Kinetic website, the, the device launcher and the development platform as a device itself does not yet support M1 uh, systems. That doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't run. So you, uh, your, your mileage may vary, as they say. Uh, so give it a try. I would actually like to know if that works. It's a very little information about that. Uh, but technically, it's not yet supported by Audio Kinetic. So it might work or it might not work. It depends a little bit on how uh, good the, um, the, the, the compatibility, compatibility layers are that Apple provides for M1, M1 Max. It has not yet been ported to that system. However, and that's important to know, any game that you're developing uh, will work on M1. So, so the, while the uh, development environment of WISE does not yet is not yet supported in, in uh, on Apple Silicon. All the games that you develop can be ported to Apple Silicon games. So that 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 is that is that is working perfectly. And uh, and I think that's everything I wanted to say at the very beginning. So uh, what I wanted to do now is uh, go ahead and install all the software. So um, be prepared that it takes a little. So so um, if you if if it's very late and you want to go to sleep, please do that uh, and come back tomorrow. But it, it will take us in about an hour to get everything installed. Now I'm going to obviously not kind of film the entire thing. So, so I'm going to speed up the video throughout these this, uh, this, this lengthy installation procedures, but I nevertheless wanted to go with you over the entire installation procedure so that at the end of this video, everybody who is following this series has the exact same installation on the system and we can start working with, uh, with Audio Kinetic Vice and, and Unity. So uh, let's install. Well, there are, there are two things really we, uh, we really need, uh, and those are the two um, software installs that allow us to run both Unity as well as Vice. And in both cases, that is done through a, um, a launcher or a, a hub. Uh, in case of Unity, it's called the Unity Hub. In case of Audio Kinetic Vice, it's called the Vice Launcher. So we need to install those first. Um, in order to install those, I'm not going to go into the installation of that particular piece of software because it's very, very straightforward. I'm going to put the links to these websites uh, down below. But what you essentially need to do is you need to go to the Unity website, uh, push the Get Started button. And in the Get Started button, you choose the personal or free version, Get Started again. And that essentially then brings you to a page that allows you to download the Unity Hub. At some point, you will need to set up an account. The same is true also for the Audio Kinetic website. And that account will then allow you to log in so and, and authenticate your version of Unity or your version of, of Audio Kinetic device with, with Audio Kinetic. With, without having that account, you will not be able to use uh, both systems. But once again, they are free. So uh, don't, don't worry too much about signing up with with, with Vice and, and Audio Kinetic. Um, the same thing goes for Audio Kinetic. So essentially, if you go to the Audio Kinetic site, you essentially download Vice, um, and that will then bring you to the Download Vice Launcher button, which uh, once again is available for Mac or Windows system. And you simply download that launcher, you install it. Once again, you have to at some point set up an account uh, so that you can log in and uh, and use the software, but that is a very painless process. So once you've done that, you launch both uh, the, the Unity Hub as well as the device launcher. And I've already done that. Um, so let me let me go here. So here we have the device launcher, and we have the Unity Hub in the way they pop up. And uh, in both cases, they serve as uh, for multiple purposes. Uh, you know, kind of in, in, in case of Unity, it allows you to access some learning tutorials or community features, your projects, and most importantly, the individual installs. Now, I currently have one version of Unity installed on that machine. Um, now, I'm import it's important to know that uh, in game development, because it's so critical that your game is functioning correctly. So if you're, if you're starting your development with a particular version of Unity, you want to make sure that you can actually finish through uh, with that particular version of Unity. So game developers, if they're working on multiple games, usually have multiple game engines, uh, multiple versions of the same game engine installed. So as you go along, you might actually have multiple Unity versions here installed. and uh, 
uh, and depending on the game that you're working on, you, it will pick the one that sort of uh, the game is, is originally developed on. This is this is super important because we want to make sure that nothing breaks and we want to make sure that everything that we do in a game development is is fully tested with all the uh, the additional software pieces that we are using. Now the same is true for our, for our audio kinetic wise. If we go to the wise button, uh, and I'm going to talk about these buttons later, but if we go to the wise button, I'm seeing the uh, the versions that I currently have installed. Currently, I have not a single version installed, and it it, it tells me that I, that I can install the latest or the newest version, and that's one of the things that we are that we are going to do right now. Now before we before before we continue, essentially, we, we, there's one thing to, uh, that we need to make sure is we need to make sure is that the, that the version of WISE that we are using and the version of Unity that we are using are working with each other. Now, in general, that there shouldn't be too much of an issue, but if you're particularly if you're working with a commercial uh, on a commercial game, you want to make sure that everything has been tested thoroughly. So uh, you want to absolutely make sure that the version of Vice that you're using uh, is compatible with the version of Unity that you're using, or not compatible, has been tested with the version of Unity that you're using. Now, in order to find that out, and and what we is, since we have a completely new stall, install, the way we would go about this, we would simply take the latest version of Vice. Uh, and uh, we would try to figure out what version of Unity works with the latest version of Vice. In order to find that out, we go to the release notes. So let's click on the release notes here. That will bring up the release notes. And uh, you know, there are all kinds of things that you, that you can look at at this point. But the thing that's really interesting to us is the Vice Unity integration. And in the Vice Unity integration under release notes, we we can look uh, what Unity versions this has been tested on. So. Um, in the latest version of Vice, at least at the time I was recording this video, we see that the uh, that the Unity version that this has been tested on is 2020.1, which is last year's version. It's actually not even the, la the latest version of 2020. Uh, and more accurately, uh, if you're working on any of those platforms, it is Unity 2020.1.16. Uh, F1, and uh, if you're working on a PlayStation 5, it is 2020.1.15 F1. So we are, uh, un unless you are working on a play PlayStation 5, which is highly unlikely because it requires a special licensing, which is quite expensive, uh, any of the systems that you are going to kind of a, a, a target at this point is probably going to be one of those that that uh, that is based on Unity 2020. Point one, point sixteen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, install so that just so that we don't forget because we want to use the latest version of Vice. We are going to install Unity version twenty twenty point one point sixteen. How do we do that? Well, um, we go to the and let me let me minimize this right for a second. Um, let me go to the installs. Um, we want to the, the one that I've currently installed is 2019.4.20. That is a long-term support version, which just essentially means that that is a version that uh, that uh, Unity supports for an extended period of, of time, so the developers can be sure that the games are supported through uh, through Unity. Um, we are going to need that later, so so at some point you will actually come back and install that as well. I'm going to tell you uh, in a second when that, when that's going to happen. But uh, what we are what we want to do now is we want to add version 2020.1.16. Now the way to do that is we're going to the add button, and uh, it it then tells me that I want to add a, a Unity version, and it gives me certain options of of, uh, of Unity. Now, the, the, the recommended or the late, latest stable release is 2020.3.12. Now, in all likelihood, uh, you know, kind of that would be fine, honestly. Um, I, I would not expect that anything that, that works in 2020.1 does not work in 2020.3. But just to be on the safe side, let's, let's go to 2020.3. Point, point one. Now it's not one of the options that I have here. So so the way to go that is essentially to go to the download archive. So I, I need to click on the download archive button here and that will open up a website. 
and that will give me all options of all the versions that I'm that I'm having and uh, and I want to choose unity 2020.1 so I, I'm, I'm clicking 2020.x and I'm going down 2020.1 where is it here 2020.1.16 uh, which has been released in uh, it's a released from December 3rd 2020 that was the last time this what this was this was updated so um, so let's open that I can download it for a Mac or Windows and install it manually but also I can simply install it through the unity hub so let's do that. So I click uh, on the Unity Hub button and that will open up the, the Unity Hub. And let me minimize that again. And uh, and essentially kind of now tells me that uh, what what platforms I want to develop on. And that's, a, that's an important thing to remember. There is essentially one version that that we downloaded, we downloaded the Mac version, but even if we are on a Mac computer, we obviously also want to develop games for other platforms. So we need to add support for these other platforms to this install. So uh, what you would now select is the, the list of all platforms that you plan to release your game on. And uh, for us, uh, technically, it would not be that critical. So we could just, uh, just um, essentially choose the one that we are working on because that's the only one we're actually ever going to use. But there are a couple of features that I need to show during this sequence that require that we have at least a second version installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply do the, the standard thing. I'm going to add the, the Andros, uh, Android support, iOS support and the Windows build support. Uh, so they have those four. So once again, Android, Android um, iOS, Mac, and Windows. And uh, and we are we're also going to add the documentation here. And then we press the install button. And that uh, will essentially then give me the, 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 the traditional security warning. And and this will open up the install. So now it's it's going to download everything and install everything. This is going to take some time, so I'm uh, in in the interest of everybody's time. Uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to uh, speed that video up. When I first did that in class, I had everybody install everything on on site because I wanted to make sure that that uh, that we are sort of all on the same page. And as it turns out, if 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 twenty people are installing the soft, the same software on the same network simultaneously, that 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 uh, that kind of uh, creates all kinds of issues um, but uh, you should be fine it should take about five minutes it's first downloading it that's what it's doing now and then and then it's in, it is installing everything so so let's wait until this is finished and see you in a second okay so it has now finished installing we can see that we installed all the deployment platforms android ios apple and windows uh, and we are technically ready to go um, so the next the next thing we need to do is we need to install uh, the the version the latest version of Audio Kinetic Vice um, and let's let's go ahead and do that. So for that let's close let's minimize that window. Let's open up the Vice launcher. Uh, let's go to Vice and what we want to do is we want to install the latest version um, and let's click the install button and uh, it, what it's going to do it's going to give us like all number of options here and this is a little bit more involved than than just installing unity because we do have a number of options now the first thing uh in in our in our particular case if you want to follow the entire sequence we actually need all these packages here so cl please click on select all um not sure if we if you're going to take advantage of the c plus plus sdk but we definitely need the the documentation and the samples and then we're going to choose the deployment platforms and it's important for us that the deployment platforms and the deployment platforms that we've chosen in unity actually match so in unity we choose we chose android we chose the apple platform but actually we only chose uh the mac os system we didn't and, and iOS, sorry, we didn't really go for tvOS, and then we chose the uh, the, the the Windows the Windows system, right? And uh, 
actually let me let me let me install all windows windows systems here and uh and then uh it will essentially tell tell me how much space this will need it will also tell me where the directory is uh if possible don't change that that there are all kinds of things that can happen if you change the uh, directories in in these installations and some sometimes especially with the examples that we have it, um, things might be screwed up so so we're going to keep everything here and we are going to click on next and uh, the next thing what it allows me to do is it allows me to choose a, a list of plugins now uh, if you are familiar with digital audio workstations you are or actually many of the development tools in the multimedia environment you are familiar with the concept of plugins plugins are generally third-party uh, extensions to a particular software um, in terms of uh, wise there are many things that that you can add uh, most of them require additional licenses so um I, I would I would recommend just leaving everything everything that you have here checked um, so that that includes the uh, device um, the standard device plugins uh, and let me see I think we, we can leave the the aura headphone on if you want that's not necessarily something we can need I'm going to this deselect the isotope suit uh, which which is a series of plugins uh, for mastering um, you know kind of and all kinds of uh, different audio processing and I'm also going to deselect the MS MC DSP suit because we don't really have licenses for that and and you don't really need that um, but the one thing that I'm going to add is the Nuendo game audio connect um, feature because the plugin because we are towards the end of the series we're going to look at Nuendo and how that connects into Vice um, and for that we need that now if you if you uh, forget to select something or if you have things installed that you don't want to install don't worry too much about it that can be changed later so um, so in this particular case what I did I just added the Nuendo um, game audio connect plugin I deselected the isotope and the make DSP plugin and uh, and I think that's the only thing I did. Everything else I, I just left. Uh, and let's install that now. So so that's that's uh, going to install device audio, um, the device engine, and that that is a similarly lengthy install procedure. We see it's about four gigabytes download. So depending on your network or computing performance, you know, kind of it might take more or less time. Uh, on my system, it usually takes somewhere between five to ten minutes. So let's press the install button. And let's, yeah, the standard security warning. And then let's wait until the installation has been completed. Okay, it came back uh, and uh, and uh, tell, told me that the install operation completed successfully. Uh, I can I can now technically add my Vice 2 Unity and Unreal projects. I don't really have any projects uh, in on the system yet, so so essentially it will tell me that that there's nothing here. So let me let me just click that away. Uh, and I now have this uh, this note that I have the uh, essentially the version here installed. I can uh, launch Vice uh, and I can also change the installation if I want to. Um, now, uh, one thing to remember is that always be mindful in terms of the versions that you have installed. Vice will sometimes remind you that there is a new version available and asks you to, uh, to upgrade or install that and then convert your game into the new version. Always be very, very careful if you do that, because once again, uh, you need to make sure that, uh, that nothing breaks and things that might have worked in one version might not work in the next version. So if you want to be super secure, uh, essentially, once you start, with that particular version unless it's really a minor bug fix uh, don't really upgrade and, and leave it the way that it is and continue your development in that particular version right so um so i now have everything there's 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 actually one thing i uh, i also would like uh, everybody to add here and that is in the samples in the uh, audio kinetic provides samples for both unity as well as unreal uh and uh Unit for, for Unreal, it is the Vice Audio Lab, and for Unity, it is the Vice Adventure Game, which is a fully developed adventure game that utilizes Vice. Um, and uh, where, where um, Audio Kinetic provides the full source code, both for Vice as well as for Unity. <laughs> And, uh, and then there are also a couple of samples for Vice. Now, for Vice, we already installed those because uh, we selected them in the 
in the uh, Vice installation. But what I would like everybody to do is to install the Vice Adventure game. And uh, I currently don't really have any version installed. Um, I'm going to install the latest version of the uh, of the adventure game. There are a couple of things to um, that you need to be aware uh, in terms of the type of version that you're installing here. First of all, uh, this version requires the uh, Unity 219.4.20 F1, and that, if you remember, is the reason why I have 2.19.4.20.20 F1 here installed, just to run the Vice Adventure game. So uh, with the installation of the Vice Adventure game, after you've done that, please also go back to the Unity Hub and install this in this version of Unity. Uh, the way to do that is exactly the same way we installed that. Um, I think um, I think it is. Yeah, it is. No, it's well. It, it should actually work with that one, but but you know, kind of you need to go back to the download archive and and install exactly that version. Um, and uh, and. Uh, the second thing uh, is it shows here up not for certification. Now, what, what does this mean? Now, uh, Audio Kinetic Vice, and I'm actually going to go over that in a second, uh, has a very well developed uh, set of courses that they provide. Uh, and you can go through those courses and you can uh, complete uh, a certification process along the way. Now, these courses take advantage of the Vice Adventure game. However, they take advantage of an older version of the Vice Adventure game. So if you want to go through the certification courses, you actually need to choose an older version uh, of the of the Vice Adventure game so that all the functionality that you have in the certification courses uh, matches the things that are in the adventure game. Now, we are not going to do that. So um, we're going to pick a couple of things from the certification courses uh, because certification courses are really covering everything in VICE. So we are, we are going to take some, we're going to lend uh, a couple or borrow a couple of things out of those certification courses, but we're not really kind of using the advice adventure game. So we are perfectly fine with installing the, the latest version, the newest version. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to put install. Now, once we put install, please also select the Unity source project because we, we, we not only want to play the adventure game and have the Vice project available, we also want to have access to the Unity project. So we're going to select that as well. And uh, and then essentially we hit install and uh, that should be our final installation procedure. It once again will take a little bit because it's uh, once again um, one and a half gigabyte. Well, actually it's five gigabytes, sorry for that. Um, so let's let's install that. Once again, security warning. And let's wait until that comes back. Okay, uh, and the installation came back. Uh, install operation completed successfully. And I now see that I have a couple of options here uh, in, in this uh, Vice Adventure game under the samples once again. I can run the adventure game. I can open it up in Vice uh, 21.1.2 uh, or I can open it up in Unity. Now, you're only going to see the open in Unity button if you uh, if you have also installed. Once again, you need to go back to, to Unity and install that, that, that game engine. Uh, but we can we we can open that up. So now, we, so so the the next thing we're going to we're going to do is we are simply well before we do anything, let's have a look at the adventure adventure game actually. Um, so so that you get a sense of essentially what you can do with it. So let's click on, click on the run wise adventure game button and see if it works. Now this is the splash screen that you would normally see in a in a game that uh, that essentially uses Vice. So let me see. Let me just adjust the audio level so that oops, that you hear something. Um. Well, actually, let me just make sure. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong headphone. Just, I just need to make sure that the uh, that my speakers are not not creating a feedback loop here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's uh, start the game. Now I'm honestly not particularly good in that game, so 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 uh, don't <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to kind of kind of play around with it a little. So 
so so you have all the sound effects if I'm walking if I'm if I'm kind of kind of fighting right and let me just go in the direction into the village So I think I think I can talk to the to the wizard. Hello, adventurer. You are just in time. Something's gone terribly wrong in the uh. land of Allegro. Our village has been struck by a plague of evil. This dark essence is consuming our beautiful vegetation. I think I need to complete the complete dialogue before I can stead. exit. Can you help me save Allegro Kingdom? Obviously, we can help him. But that's something we're going to do. I have a Oops. book somewhere in my house that may help us clean this infestation. I remember placing it somewhere in the small room to the left of the entrance. Would you kindly retrieve it for me? Why can I not retrieve it myself? Well, if you must know, I've developed a crippling case of claustrophobia. And as you can see, my house is rather small. Well, that is a little bit of a stretch, but okay. Um... Okay, so I'm now. So let me let me just let me just exit that. Quit game. Okay, here we are. Are you sure? Yes, I am. So um, you can open that project in Vice, and you can open that project in Unity, and have a look at, at essentially how that looks. Now we are going to do that next week. Um, just be aware of one thing: if you open these uh, the Unity project, and if you compile that Unity project uh, in in Unity, it will not give you any sound. And the reason for that is because there are a couple of things that we need to adjust for our particular installation in the Vice Adventure game. Because currently, um, what it did is it, it downloaded all the source files on the Vice side and all the source files on the Unity side. But what it didn't do is it did not download the uh, the compiled sound banks that, that uh, Vice would create. And we first need to create those. And for, for, for that uh, game to work, we also need to put them into the correct directories. And that's something we're going to do next week. So so just be aware that if you, if you, if you open it up now and you start playing it in Unity, it will actually not give you any sound so if you want to play the game you need to run it here so let, let me let me go back to to normal mode and uh so so we have we have device adventure game that's something we're going to use once in a while uh over the next couple of weeks um and uh and uh so, so the final thing i wanted to show you today is essentially how would we go about starting a project and uh, in in order to, sh to demonstrate that let's just um, create a new project in unity let me minimize that and let me open up the unity launcher again so so the way this works is we go into the projects setting we do currently don't really have any project and we create a new unity project so let's create a new one um there are a couple of options here, um, you know, kind of uh, if if you are familiar with Unity, you know which one to choose. If this is the first time you're doing something with Unity, don't worry too much about it. What we want to do is we want to do a 3D project, not a 2D project, even though the 2D version of Unity is really just a, a, a different view of a 3D environment. Um, uh, we also don't really, are not really yet interested in doing anything at a high, very high resolution level or very high um, realistic level so so 3d is perfectly fine for us uh, and uh, let's call that game audio view 101 oops audio not audio game audio 101 and i think i have a folder here let's put it in you can put it anywhere right so so it's 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 a special folder for the class that i'm teaching Let's create that. And what it will do, it will create the game and uh, essentially an empty game and uh, essentially open it up in Unity. So let's just wait until that is finished. Now, if you have never worked with Unity before, this is the first time you're actually opening up Unity itself. Um, the, the user interface uh, is 
is not that difficult to understand, but don't be don't be alarmed if you are um, if 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 you're a little overwhelmed at the beginning. Uh, this will this will ease up very very quickly once you understand what the, what the individual pieces in the in the user interface are doing. Um, there's not going to be a lot of stuff in the project. We're just opening up an empty project, which essentially means there's just some basic uh, information about. Uh, Okay, that, that is a little too large, sorry for that. Okay, so uh, essentially we just have two objects here. And once again, you know, kind of don't worry too much about it yet. Um, I'm going to talk about what these things mean in the next, in the next video. It's something that, that is, that is uh, explained very, very, very quickly. Um, I just, just want to give your attention to, to that part here. Currently, we see a project uh, view and a console view. Those are the two, two things that we're going to see when we are doing the integration in a second. There will actually, it will actually add a third view. So I uh, so just to be aware of that. And, uh, and what it will also do is it will add an additional object here. Um, so, so just look at the, uh, the objects that are currently here. We have a camera and a light, and we essentially have these two views here. Um, and uh, other than that, I'm not really going to do anything with it yet. Uh, that's going to come in the next couple of, uh, of weeks. So let me just close that again. Now, once we, once we have, uh, once we have created that project, um, the next step would be to uh, integrate Vice into that project. And, and for that to happen, we need to open up device launcher. I still have that op open. And here under the uh, Unity and Unreal tabs, you have all the projects that you have in Unreal and all the projects that you have in Unity. Now, we currently, I don't, I have Unreal installed on that machine, but I don't have any Unreal projects here. And in Unity, what it will do is it will now give me the uh, the game audio um, project that I've just created. It will also show me the Vice Adventure game, which is the one that we just played. And it will actually ask me, do I want to upgrade Vice in this particular project? Um, because I essentially, you know, kind of, uh, I, I'm, 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 I, I, if, if I'm working on an older version of Vice, I can have the system upgraded. Be very, very careful whenever you do that. At the very least, back up your projects and make sure that you can restore everything if you do the upgrade version, because sometimes that upgrade can actually kind of break things. Um, but what we want to do is we want to integrate Vice into the project. And uh, for that, we just push. And there are really two uh, possibilities on how to do that. We can either do that uh, automatically through device launcher, or we can also uh, use integrated offline files. Um, now, if you're an advanced user of Unity, or if you're integrating Vice into a project that is already very far advanced and to have a lot of stuff in your project, you might want to choose the offline uh, in installation. Um, if you have any Unity project that is at that level, you know exactly how to do that. Essentially, you get a package and then you import the package. But if you're new to this, uh, just integrate Vice into the project. And once again, you would do that right at the beginning when you start a project and not later because you want to make sure that it doesn't break anything that you already have. And, and if you are integrating it later, make, make absolutely sure that you have everything backed up. I had students who lost entire projects because they integrated Vice into an existing project and, uh, and had, didn't have any backup. And then the, the Vice integration failed and everything was kind of blown to bits and we want to avoid that. So let's, let's integrate Vice into the project. What it's going to do is it's not going to look into the integration uh, features. It's going to give me options in terms of the platforms that I want to, to use. Um, in this particular case, uh, it's Mac OS and Windows. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's just leave it, leave the two. And, uh, and uh, I can add plugins if I want to at that point. And then it gives me the option to either do that or uh, install it right into the project or create a backup project. So, so you definitely want to make sure that uh, that you want to create a copy of the Unity project and then install it into that, so so that you have a, a fallback solution in case anything goes wrong with that. So so just leave it the way it is, and then let's say integrate. And this will actually do one more download. So this is the I think this is the final installation that we have, but that should go very very quickly or reasonably quickly at least. So let's wait until that is finished. 
Okay, it came back uh, and uh, essentially tells me that the operation has been completed successfully. The, um, the integration has been done. Uh, Vice is now integrated into my Unity project. I can click it away. And the way this would normally work in a, in a program or in the development environment is that you would launch everything for the Vice launcher. So the Vice launcher would become your central hub through which you can start up Unity as well as Vice. And uh, we have this one game audio project 101 and we can open that up in Unity and we can open that up in Vice. Um, so let me just open that up in Unity first. So um, what we will now see is that Vice has actually added a couple of additional things to my project. So the first thing I'm seeing is sort of this vice picker, and this will become uh, one of our main features with which we are going to um, essentially work within within Unity. And uh, the second thing that it did is it, it added a vice global object. This global object will have uh, will sort of function as a central object that uh, that we can use in order to store anything that that uh, should be available throughout the entire the entire um, game. Uh, it also serves as a sort of an essential hub for Vice, where all the, the main logic is, is, is uh, located. And what it also did is it added a, um, and you probably can't see that because I'm in the way, it added, oopsie, sorry, sorry for that. It added a, ah, Windows. It added a uh, an AK game object, and if you know, don't worry too much about what that actually means at that point. Uh, we will we will actually kind of talk about this when it, when time comes. Uh, but uh, but it sort of pre what it did it prepared everything in the game for us to use so that we can start working with Vice. Now um, the second thing I'm going to do here is I'm also going to open the project in in Vice. And usually, if you are working on an integration or on the connection of audio of integration of audio into a game, you would technically have both uh, things open at the same time. So I'm also going to open the project up in Vice. Now this is the first time we're actually going to start up Vice itself. It's going to greet us uh, with a it's going to greet us with a, no, it's actually not doing that. Let me, okay. Now the, the, once again, the user interface that you have in Vice uh, looks a little daunting. Um, there are uh, many, the way this works, and this is actually something that, that if, if you are familiar with any advanced software package that you, that you are aware of, the way this works is that you have many different views who, uh, that give you different perspectives on your project. Uh, and these views are then combined in certain layouts that you're working with. And uh, we are going to talk about these things as the as the sequence of, of, of videos progresses. But for the moment, we don't really need to uh, we don't don't be too concerned about these things. We're, we're going to talk about them after them after we are um, essentially as, as we go along. But uh, but this is a fairly standard way of doing things. If you're working with Cubis or Nuendo, for example, that that's that's the that's the common way to do things there as well. Um, now uh, there's just one thing that uh, that I. I I'd like to point out is if I'm going back into the Unity project. Uh, now that I've opened up Vice, you see that uh, the uh, the Vice picker has been populated with with, with certain uh, parameters, and this will become critical to us. Actually, this is where we are going to uh, pass on all the information from Vice into the into Unity, and uh, if you don't see that. Uh, you can uh, essentially go refresh projects. And the one thing, the one thing that I also need to point out is that that in Vice, uh, the way the communication works between Vice and Unity is through an XML file. So whenever you do something in Vice, uh, one thing that you always need to do is you need to save it. Only if you save everything in Vice, you can be absolutely sure that Unity knows of it. And the reason for that is because during the save procedure, Vice generates this XML file, which is then read in by Unity, and and uh, and therefore Unity knows what 
what what Vice has been doing and what are the things that are compiled in the sound banks that Vice has been creating so that Unity can have access to those things. Um, and uh, I think that is everything I wanted to talk about today. Maybe one final thing, if you if you got interested in this and you um, essentially want to get your feet wet and you're a little disappointed that we didn't really start doing anything at that point, uh, one thing that you can do is you can go into the Audio Kinetic website, I actually recommend that everybody do, and go to the Learn Wise section and in the Learn Wise section you have a number of courses um, that you can go through and these courses are actually very well done um, these are very well done and uh, and if you want to get your feet wet you kind of followed me today and you don't want to wait for a week uh, just have a look at the certification was 101 this certification course works not with any unity project but actually works with one of the sample projects that came with us directly now if you if you want to if you want to see that content you can simply click on the get certified button and uh, that will give you access to all the all the lessons and uh, and that will allow you to get your feet wet and start playing around with it a little uh, but uh, otherwise um, you know we are going to we are going to next week we are actually going to start making our first sounds and putting things into 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 unity and uh, and create certain objects in vice that we then will trigger through unity and we're also going to talk in, about how to get sound into the um, unity version of the vice adventure game so how do we compile everything and how we how we're going to make sure that everything in the, is in there and uh, and everything else um, and uh, that is pretty much what I wanted to say today. Once again, if you have any questions, uh, make a comment, drop me a note. Um, I would appreciate if you liked that video. Uh, otherwise, uh, subscribe to this channel, do all the things that people do on YouTube. And otherwise, I see you next week, this time next Monday, uh, for the next installment of the uh, Audio Kinetic Wise and Unity series. Thank you.